Hey guys, Jeff here, Dice Setters. I will be in Vegas this weekend and for Super Bowl weekend. Um, right now, the only thing I have planned for Super Bowl weekend, and uh, I had to change it just a hair, because yesterday I told somebody I have the whole weekend open. I am, uh, I treated myself to the Black Crows. The Black Crows were in Vegas a year ago, right before Super Bowl, but this time they are there for two days and they'll be playing at the Palms. So if you like old rock and roll, they are kind of a jazz as well. And if you're going to be in Vegas, definitely get a ticket or two for the Black Crows. Um, this week, I'm going to talk about how to know if you're using a good craps strategy when it is your time to roll. I'm not talking when other people are rolling. I'm talking about when you are rolling. There are videos about crap strategies. There are a dime a dozen, but they all, most of the time, have flaws to them. How to sit there and know if yours has flaws or perhaps the one that you watched on video has flaws. And with a little bit of manipulation, you can sit there and take almost any strategy and make it a winning strategy. So I'm going to give you seven things to find out how to know if you have a good crap strategy when it is your time to roll. Stay tuned. All right, guys, the first one is, um, of course, this is how to know if you're using a good craps strategy when it is your time to roll. The first one is, does this craps strategy meet the amount of money I have brought to the table? Um, you can have, you know, any craps strategy. But if you only brought $500 to the table and this is your craps strategy, there is something wrong with the strategy. Another thing you need to figure out is you know, how many times can you use your crap strategy? How many turns can you go around the table? Um, I would have to sit, you know, safe to say if you brought a thousand dollars and that was your crap strategy, that's going to last you a long time. You can go around the table at least 10 times using only that crap strategy. Of course, when other people are rolling, you're going to sit there and change it up. You might just put, you know, money on the, on the eight or money on the six or money on the, the six and eight. And that way that you will have money again when it's your turn to roll. Another thing you need to think about is number two. Does my strategy put too much money on the table? And let's go back to that, uh, the first demonstration I showed you. If this is your crap strategy and you can only roll four or five times, that is putting way too much money on the table for sure. Or do I have, you know, too little amount of money? I don't have any ones with me. But let's say I had two ones. It takes money to make money. And if that is your crap strategy, you're not going to make much money unless you have a secret formula of only rolling sixes and eights. That's all there is to it. That would definitely be not enough. And, of course, the other way was too much. Number three, a lot of strategies sit there and say, okay, we're going to start with the six and eight. Once the six and eight get hit, we're going to get paid. And then we're going to sit there and move to the five and nine. If any of these numbers, you know, get made, then we're going to sit there and move to the four and ten, so on and so forth. How many dead spins are you going to be looking at? before your strategy comes to life. And of course, this would be a strategy that comes to life versus the strategy that you started with. How many dead spins are we going to sit there and have? And the reason why dead spins are so bad for is because it gets you one step closer to seven. Say like, you know, 10 rolls is the max I have until I know I'm going to roll a seven. Well, if you hit the four, you hit the 12, you hit the nine, you know, you hit the two, you've never hit the six and eight yet. This would be 
in my opinion, a bad strategy because there's too many formulas for you to sit there and fill in the gaps. There's too many dead spins. Unless you have a secret dice set that only hits six and eight. Another thing, does your strategy um, include a time to collect? If all you are doing, okay, you won here. We're going to sit there and press that back up. Okay, you won here. All we're going to do is sit there and press it back up. You've got to have a time to collect. Always have to have a time to collect. If you were doing, say, you know, the Iron Cross, as long as you hit field bets, that's fine. That's not a problem. The problem lies when you hit the five, six, and eight, and you sit there and lose the $25. But you're pressing these up each time you hit them by only one unit. That's enough pullback to put back in your stash that after seven rolls, between five to seven rolls, you should have and be playing with only casino money. And that's fine. But all if you're doing is just power pressing, power pressing, power pressing, you're not going to win as much as you think you will because seven will happen. Another thing you might want to do is start counting. Okay, I'm up to 10 spins. I'm going to turn it off. There's nothing wrong with that. You still could have be playing your bonus, and that's for the long roll. If your strategy depends upon a long roll, it is a bad strategy. Long rolls don't happen as much as people wish they did. And when I'm playing and I end up with a long roll, I look around to see who's won and not very many people have won. And the reason why is because most people are not expecting the long roll. Most people are not betting for a long roll. Number five, the fewer steps to your strategy, the better off you're going to be. Iron Cross. 25 in the field. You hit the 5, 6, 8, go up by one unit. Until all these will match, then go up one unit on there. If it's, okay, we got to sit there and, uh, you know, start, hit the 8, then we're going to move to the 9, and then move to the 5. If you have many, many strategies, you're not concentrating at all on your dice set. I can guarantee you on that. Plus, if it's really involved, and I've seen some strategies that are just ridiculously involved, you're going to piss off the dealers. That's all there is to it. Um, and a dealer that's pissed off is not a happy dealer. I can tell you that. They're going to make your life absolutely miserable. This one is super, super important. Super, super important. If this is your dice strategy, and all you're doing is hitting 4 and 10 in the field, you need to change your strategy. You'd want to sit there and change your strategy so that it is tailored to your dice set. And again, if you're one of those lucky people that can only hit sixes and eights, play it. That would be tailored to your your, your rolling ability. If you go, you know what? I never hit the six and eight. Then play the outside and the field. But most people never think about my dice set. What does it roll? The last one is your results. What are your results? If you don't come back with money from the table, is it because of your dice set? Is it because you're not stopping telling the dealer, you know what, turn my bets off when I hit uh, five rolls? Or is it just a bad strategy? I try to use the same strategy over and over again because I know what the results are going to be. Every once in a while, I'll see one on a video or someone will say, hey, try this strategy and I'll do it. And I'll be like, man. Either that was super, super good, or that was just ridiculously stupid. And the reason why is you can see the results, especially if it's really, really bad. You can, I mean, my dice setting doesn't really change, 
how many times I can roll before a seven, most of the time doesn't change. And so if I lost tremendously, it was because the strategy was bad. I didn't have my money where I needed to, or it took too many steps to sit there and do it, or I was thinking about the strategy and I wasn't thinking about my die set. Um, and those are the seven steps that I thought of. I imagine there's other ways to know how, uh, you know, how to know if you are using the, you know, a good craps strategy. And like I said, there's thousands of them. Just because I don't mention the one that you're using doesn't make it wrong. If you like it, it's consistent, and you're bringing home money, and you, you know, that's good, fine. Keep it that way. But if you go, you know, every time I go to the table, and every time I roll, I lose. Well, there's something wrong with either your strategy, or there's something wrong with your dice roll. Change your dice roll, or change your strategy. That's all I got for this week. I am going to be talking about um, Horn High. Um, it's just something I've always thought about. It's something, uh, I don't know. I'm going to sit there and do a video on Horn High. It, uh, I think it's going to be an interesting vehicle. A vehicle. Uh, interesting uh, video. I hope, to, hope you guys would enjoy that one. And I'm still trying to get a hold of uh, and do that, that interview at Ellis Island. And I know this is going to be a huge help to some people that uh, that might not know that you can do this. Um, and hopefully, hopefully the person I need to do this interview with will not be busy, and I'll be able to film it and put it out there for you guys. And uh, it's a big eye opener. And if you know, you know. And for those of you that don't know, are going to be blown away. That's all I can sit there and say. Thanks, uh, guys, for listening and gals. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Um, definitely get the likes up, please. Um, and uh, for those of you that uh, talked about bubble craps, whether you liked it or you're not, I got one person said they didn't like it, and I got one person said they did. So we're again at a 50-50. So maybe some of you guys can comment. Let me know you liked it, you didn't like it. Because um, right now I'm saying at a 50-50. So I guess that means that not enough of you didn't like it, and not enough of you liked it. So I, I don't know. But I will sit there and uh, I'll do live bubble craps this weekend. I don't have a problem with doing that. Um, and if you have a strategy that you go, Jeff, this is a winning strategy. Uh, strategy. Let me know. Um, I'm all for bubble craps and a winning strategy, which is completely different than this. And you say, why is it different? Because you can't hold the dice. The dice just kind of pop and accumulate like popcorn. Um, but let me know. You sit there and say, you know what? This is what you do. You put here. You put money here. You put money there. I'll try it. And, you know, it can't be much worse than my last uh, last time I did bubble craps. But definitely uh, tell me if you like it or you don't. And I hope to go live for bubble craps uh, on Saturday. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, be safe out there. And thanks for watching. See you next time.